guys, I'm Franz very much indeed for listening to this tour video in which I'm going to show you how to calculate all ratio and relative risk as well as the interpretation. First, in the theory, and the second of all, we'll go into SPSS in order to show you how to use this tool in order to practically implement the calculation of all ratio as well as interpretation. So, let us start first of all the theoretical foundation of all ratio and relative risk. <laughs> By definition, we can say that the uh, old ratio is a statistical measure mostly used in epidemiology in order to express the degree of dependence between two qualitative variables. So in old ratio analysis, we have two qualitative variables that we are going to search for the link between the two. Old ratio can be also defined as a ratio of old or of event that happen in the individual group A, for example, the disease with the same event happening in the group or in the individual group B. So what's all? All is ratio of a probability of an event and a contrary of the event. So if the probability that the event happened in a group B, in a group A is P, and Q is probability in a group B, all ratio is calculated as follow. All of the probability that the event happened in a group A and all of the probability of the probability of the event in a group B. How to compute really a ratio? We have for example a disease, some person that are, are affected by the disease. So there are A person that are affected by the disease and exposed to B person didn't have a disease but are exposed to the disease. So we have two groups the group of exposed and the group of unexposed to the disease. We have a group of affected, that's called cases, and we have a group of, of control, that the person that didn't have a disease. So if you have this contingency table showing the relationship between the occurrence of the disease and, and our factor, that is a group of uh, exposed or unexposed to disease. A, a group of exposed or in, uh, un, um, unexposed to the disease can be a group of male and female person or any other variable that can be used in order to express the link or the dependence between two variables and so the old ratio is calculated as follows. We have E over C divided by B over D. So we can also have uh, uh, this relationship A times D divided by B times C. So in this case, the probability that disease uh, occur in the group of exposed is A divided by A plus B. The probability that the, the disease occur in the group C, in the group B, or the group of unexposed person is C, the number of person exposed among diseased person divided by C plus D. That's the total number of uh, exposed person. So the odd ratio is calculated as all of our uh, probability to belong to different group that is same relationship that we will show you very earlier in this tutorial video when we take this p and q variable of our prob probability to belong to the exposed and unexposed group so what's the interpretation of all ratio we have the uh, interpretation when the all ratio is close to one the event is independent in the group that means that if a uh, main variable is a disease like the previous table that we show you earlier we can say that if the all ratio is close to one that may Maybe disease and gender are independent. Gender didn't significantly influence the occurrence of the disease if we have the old ratio close to one. But if you have a contrary old ratio that is superior to one, we can say that the event is more frequent in the group A than in group B. That means that belonging to the group E is at risk when one tend to, to, to belong to the group group A increase your probability to, to have a disease if you take the mistake in epidemiology situation and the other situation is when we have the odd ratio that is higher than, than one so that means that the event is hugely more frequent in group A than in group B so we have only a case where the odd ratio is inferior to one we can say that the event is less frequent in group E than B what that means that when you are in group B you tend not to, to develop a disease and the last case in the case when all ratio is close to zero so that means that the event is hugely less frequent in group A than in group B so let's take um, an example in order to illustrate the practice how and use all ratio in order to interpret a risk factor we have a sample of 200 individuals in which we have 100 men and 100 women that have drunk wine in ongoing week so we define our main variable that is alcoholism if you are alcoholic if you you have drunk in this week while you have drunk in the previous week every person that we have selected have drunk in the ongoing week and person that didn't drink in the previous week are supposed to be non-alcoholic that is why how we have defined our, our variable alcoholism so 
uh, in our sample we have 19 men that have also drink the last week that are alcoholic and also and uh, only 10 of the 100 men have not drunk on the previous week and let's look at uh, women population if you look at women population we can see that 20 women in our sample have drunk in the previous week among uh, 100 men that have drunk of the current one week so we can calculate the odd ratio and we found that odd ratio is 36 that means that being men is a risk factor of developing alcoholic factor that also means that in the group of men alcoholic is 36 times more higher than in the women population <laughs> Let us go in SPSS to show you how uh, odd ratio and probability risk are calculated. So you just need to go on analyze and go on descriptive statistics and click on cross table. Go on cross table and you select a variable of control. So, for example, as this is the database on satisfaction and survey that have been made on the client of a shop, we now search for imminent of buying or not a product. So there are so many there are so many questions that has been asked to those who accept this survey so that they have buy or not the product. So we are, uh, for example here are going to search for determinant of buying or not a product. So our treatment group is those who buy a product and our control group is those of the person who doesn't buy product. So we select the variable that buy and use this arrow to uh, put it in the column section result to the cross table in SPSS. So second of all, select the determinant. So the variable according to which we are going to uh, calculate risk statistic like a whole ratio or relative risk. So variable is gender. So I go ahead to analyze the, the risk whether or not gender is a determinant of buying or not a product. So I have selected all my two variables. So I will go on statistics, statistic and select risk and then click on continue and Okay, I have a cross table here which represents the cross table of by and gender. I have in the estimate here, odd ratio for gender. So we have a odd ratio male by female is 1.176. If you consider that this odd ratio is significant, mean that men are more likely to buy than women. The interpretation of our odd ratio of 1.176 here is that men are 1.176 times more likely to buy product than women. So we have the 95% confidence interval here. So the lower value is 0.81 and the upper value is 1.76. We have here uh, for cohort buy equal yes. So this is a relative risk of according to the uh, yes to, the, to those who, uh, who buy the product. So the relative risk is 1.0. And here is a confident interval. Here are the two uh, main statistics. So here the relative risk is as close to one, which means that gender made no difference at all in the buying process. So you can say the same thing for the old ratio because maybe the uh, old ratio is seemingly more than one, but it's not uh, really significant because confidence interval contains one. So, so there are part of a confidence interval that are less than one and other part are more than one. So uh, we cannot conclude that uh, sex significantly determines a decision by or not a product. So that's it for this uh, tutorial on how to calculate all ratio and, and relative risk using SPSS.